Basically today, what I just wanted to show y'all and share with y'all, based on how much time we have, how many questions you have, is going to be how much detail I go in. But I at least wanted to give you the process, my secret sauce of setting this up. Um, this is what I call like a 360 picture. It's the holy trinity of analytics. It is being able to see the full picture when you have these three connected together and on your website. Even if you don't really know too much about it and you don't want to do too much with it, something needs to be done with it, you can work with somebody who can then make, make sense of it for you. And if you have it set up right the first time, you know what I'm saying? Mama used to say, if you're going to do it right the first time, then whoever is going to take over or help you out, or maybe you want to learn it yourself, you're going to have a better chance of using this information to really uplift and boost your whole business, your whole website, your whole marketing campaigns, because you see what's happening. You don't got to guess. We ain't got time for the guess games no more. And there has been a huge change in analytics, the analytics world in general. That's why this is important. Okay, okay. So let's talk about it real quick. Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and Microsoft Clarity. All three tools work together to give you a complete view of how people use your website. Like a puzzle, each tool gives you different pieces of information. When you put all the pieces together, you have a complete picture of how people use your site and what you can do to improve it. So that's why I have a picture of these puzzle pieces here. When I was young, I used to watch a show called The Puzzle Place. Don't laugh at me if you know anything about that. But these puzzle pieces represent each piece of the pie. I lick out a piece of the pie. And when you have all the pieces of the pie, you are able to see the whole picture. 360, I can see everything. You know, when the kids be behind you, you be like, I see you. They be like, Ma, Dad, how you see? I see you. Hey, stop jumping on the, I stop jumping on the, stop jumping on the couch. That's that 360. You got the whole thing seen. You ain't just got tunnel vision. And that's what this is all about. We're just covering these three, but these aren't the only choices when it comes to analytics. So if you are somebody who uses, who wants more privacy or other type of features, Matomo is a great option. I'll share with you later. There's Bing that has its webmaster tool, like Google. Google is Google Search Console, but it's still its webmaster tool. They just changed the name. But there's other ones out there. So just know this is what I'm calling the fundamental holy trinity for those who are looking for the most standard, most popular process and tool types. That's all, but it's not the only choice. Google Analytics is like a map that shows you where people go when they visit your website. It helps you see things like how many people visit your site and how long they stay and what pages they actually look at and so much more. So let's start with Google Analytics, which is used to be called Universal Analytics versus Google Analytics 4. Most people don't know and they're confused of what these two platforms are when you put them side by side. I think most people, matter of fact, I'm curious in the chat, who here knows the actual difference? And you could just say, put yes, if you know the difference or understand the difference between Google Analytics 3, aka Universal Analytics or Google Analytics 4. Because this is right here is probably one of the most important parts of this whole conversation, of this whole presentation. Okay, Brenda. Okay. Okay. Davood? Okay. Okay, no. Do we think so? Maybe. Carolyn? Yes. Okay. We have a all across the board type of answers here when it comes to the difference. And I know there's others that are here that are probably you know, doing other things and or just don't want to add anything in general, but still you're going to learn the key concepts of the differences. And let's start off with the data model. So before we go into that, I just want you to understand that Google Analytics 4, GA4, is a whole new platform. It was built from the bottom up or the top down. I don't know how they say that saying, but it was built in a way that 
it's not an upgrade from or update from Google Analytics 3. So don't think of it as an update. You literally can't use your old analytics platform. And that's why a lot of people, especially major companies, are going boo-hoo-hoo because they got to let it go. And we know we all hate to let it go. But the data model, let's start with the data model. Universal Analytics uses a session-based data model, right? How it captures data, collects data. While Google Analytics 4 uses an event-based data model. UA was organized by sessions. Universal Analytics was organized by sessions, which was a group of interactions that somebody would do on a website or an app. Google Analytics 4 data is organized by individual events. And these events are basically user actions, clicks, and page views. So when somebody goes on your website, they are on the site for a certain amount of time, they click something, they look at a certain page. These are all what they call events, like basically activities happening on your website, where UA was more about a certain amount of time. And within that time, it would create, these are the events, but UA was like, we're first going to measure the session by let's say 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 30 seconds. And within that amount of time, how many things they do is how we're measuring our data. It ain't like that no more. It's like when you, it's immediately when a person goes to a website, like the page view is an event. What they do is an, when they scroll is an event. Everything is an event. And that's how they're measuring things by events, activities. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the biggest difference right there from how they're collecting data. Um, another big key is just their tracking code. So for the nerds out there like me, okay, this is uh, something that I'm interested in. But those of y'all who ain't too nerdish, you know what I'm saying? No, for real, this ain't really that interesting, but lack of a better terms, they've changed the coding, the way that you would connect the website, connect their, their tool to your website. GA4 now has this GTA G.js tag where Universal had a tracking code, which was like a snippet. I'll show you that as well too. But that's the difference tracking code wise. They just switched it up a little bit. But what you can do with this tracking code is much more than what you can do with the JavaScript right here. The interface, I'm going to show you that, yo, UA was cool, but it was clunky. GA4, the interface is so much smoother and it's in cards. Like it's looking at card reports. I call them report cards. I just, I ain't make that up, y'all. But shout out to that, right? They should call it that. But they're cards of reports, report cards, whatever. Y'all used to go to school like me. It is what it is. But the interface is just so much more smoother because people were having so much trouble looking at their reports. Machine learning, that's another big difference. UA had, eh, when it came to some machine learning, GA4 has, like it's learning everything and it's able to give you insights on the fly. They started that with Universal, but they took it to the next level when it came to, when it came to GA4. So yeah, it does, it includes more advanced machine learning capabilities and it can automatically identify important events and provide insights into user behavior. So you can say, how many users did I have on XYZ date? Or what was my profit, not profit, but what was my revenue during the time of this, by this device from this campaign? And it'll give you that information. And that is huge right there when you just want to get in and get out. And then cross device tracking, that was another key factor between UA and GA4 is that Google Analytics 4 provides better cross-tracking. It uses what they call new user ID feature that allows you to track users across multiple devices, even when they're not logged in. And so that's one of the greatest parts that they've really done with GA4 is whether a person's logged in, whether they're on a certain device, they're on their computer, they're on their phone. There's so many other ways outside of their app, whether they're on the app, they are able to track that user and pinpoint them. And they have these three ways. They have a, okay, we're gonna start this way. And if we can't get the information here, we're gonna start this next way. If we can't get the information here, we're gonna go to the third way. They have opportunities like that where you're gonna get that information. And then they take all of that and they create a picture of all that information to create one, one thing, but they're using different angles to create that one thing. So it basically just makes it more accurate on when they're tracking people. That's the best way to say it. Just makes it more accurate. All right, so now that we've gotten the understanding between UA, Universal Analytics, which was Google Analytics 3, and GA4, where we're at now, and for those who don't know, 
Google Analytics 4 is going to be the only option starting in July. So if you're using Universal Analytics, you will no longer have access to that. So you have two choices. And this is a nugget I'm giving you because I'm working on a major client right now. And they're ironically analytics. And they have UA, they have so much UA data, and they're so scared about migrating, but they're being forced to. So we have to do these things. You have two ways of migrating. You can either download your reports at Universal Analytics individually, or you can do an automatic migration to a big data storage like BigQuery or Amazon or something like that. The best way you can say it is that's going to give you all your data. If you do it to a data storage, it's going to give you all your data, but it's going to be harder. You got to figure all that stuff out. If you just download your reports though, that's going to take longer. You're not going to get all of your data, but you just get what you need and it's going to be easier to do. It's not going to be as hard, even though it is manual. And so this, let's say for lack of a better terms, this company that I'm working with, they chose the reports way versus the automatic way through the migration through a big data party. Let me look at the chats here real quick. Hopefully y'all got some nuggets so far. Change to GA4 is necessary because the growing privacy laws, GDPR. Yes, that is true. And for those who are even more concerned, I wish Sally was in here because she is a Motomo fan. I'm not sure if she is in here or not, but... She got me put on this company right here, Matomo, who is a Google Analytics competitor, and they are basically real big on the whole GDPR and privacy laws and you owning and controlling your data. And she got me hip to them. So I started looking more into them. And so Brenda, you make a good point. And this is an alternative that addresses your point even more extremely. Okay, let me keep reading the chat. And so you mentioned GA4, who is the author of that plugin? Um, if you're saying, oh, technically Google Analytics 4 is the analytics platform, but there is a plugin in WordPress for GA4 that Google is the actual author of the plugin, if that's what you are referring to. And then what is happening in March? Do I lose GA? So nothing is happening in March except for St. Patrick's Day here in the States, as far as I know, but, or somebody's birthday, but as far as GA is concerned, that's happening in July. So yeah, that's happening in July where they're sunsetting Google Analytics 3, Universal Analytics. Basically, if you haven't upgraded to the newest Google Analytics, you will no longer have access to all of your data in July. Just being honest, they've been telling people this for about a year and a half now, two years. So it's been a while, but that's what's happening. And basically what they're trying to do is if you haven't already set up your GA4, they're saying, hey, we can do this for you. We can migrate your data over automatically. Now, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I would advise not to do that. But at the same time, it's like one of those lawyer things. I'm not your lawyer. I'm not your analytics expert for your company. Hey, do what you feel best. But there are pros and cons to doing this migration through Google Analytics from UA to GA4. Because trust me, they're doing it for everybody because they just trying to move people forward because they know people ain't going to move unless they make a move. But I'm going to give you some more insight on how you can connect this to your website. So here is Google Analytics. If you go to Google Analytics, just Google it or analytics.google.com. It'll prompt you to sign in through your Google account. Once you do, it'll prompt you to make an account. I'm just going to try to go over this quickly for those of you all who have never done this. Matter of fact, for those of you all who've never done this, can you type never in the chat so I have an idea? I'm not going to go through every nuance and piece if everybody has already done this. So just type in never or NVR. So that way I at least know, okay, there's some people who never started a Google Analytics account at all. And I'm going to create a separate dedicated video, not video, excuse me, but a meetup just for going even deeper into Google Analytics. I just want to make sure I get into Search Console clarity as well during our session. Okay. Okay, cool. We got it. Okay. Basically what you do here. And the reason I'm saying that too, is because I'm gonna just let y'all, I'm gonna just keep it real, like all the way funky with y'all. It's only so many people who do presentations and they actually go into the tools and the things themselves. Most people just be reading off the slides. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with you. Like most people I've been to, to thousands of sessions. Everybody doesn't go into the tool and walk you through it and stuff because they don't want to show their data, their information, which is a real something really to address and things like that. 
but at the same time, they want to get through it. So I want to make sure I'm giving y'all some value by showing y'all this is what it looks like inside of the tool. I'm not just showing y'all screenshots, but basically what you do is you go inside and you create an account right here. It's very easy. So th the things that I go through fast, they're either self-explanatory or they're really easy. So don't be like, Maestro, you said you was going to show us all the goods and now you holding back the goods and stuff and you just rushing through you on some Russell Brunton type stuff. No, I'm just letting you know some of this is self-explanatory. And if you're here today right now and you've logged in and you've gotten into this conversation, this presentation, you are smart enough to get some, to, to some of this stuff. We are all intelligent here. I know we are because this is not, WordPress ain't no easy feat. I'm just keeping it all the way real. But create an account. Once you create an account, it's going to prompt you to create a property. A property is basically where your website or your app is going to live. Your, your account is where you give people access and then you can have multiple different properties, right? You have different businesses. So one account for one main umbrella and then a whole bunch of properties, or not a whole bunch, but multiple properties for your website app. I mean, for your website or your app, okay? That's why there's only so many settings right here because that's they don't you don't do too much on this level. Um, and this is where, like I said, you get your permissions. This is the most important section right here. This is where you want to set things up so all your data is being collected correctly. As I mentioned before, if you collect it correctly, setting things up, whoever takes it over is going to be able to help you in so many more ways because everything is set up right. And because this is so new, you're on the brink. Like you're really at the beginning of something special because this is only going to get bigger. Google Analytics 4 is not going to change up anytime soon. They don't change up every time the the stars align no they don't do all that they change things up for major reasons and this is a major overhaul so this why this right here is going to be great for you all but for the most part when you set things up i'm going to show you what all this stuff means here quickly uh, but basically you want to set up your property you want to give it a name you want to give your do a time zone you don't have to pick a category pick your money whatever your currency is right and then you want to set up your data stream. And this is where your actual website is going to be. Like this is what's connected to your website or your app. So if I had an app, it would be under iOS. If I didn't have an app, it would be under just my web. So iOS or Android is where you would add your app. And that's one of the great parts about this. You couldn't do it UA. So that's one big factor right there. Data stream is where you create your property, which you're going to connect to your website. Okay. The part that I wanted to share with y'all is this events aspects right here. So events is what's going to be collected. And right now there are no events here. So it's one of those things where if I go to Google's demo account, the cool part about Google is they allow you to go to their demo account, but I got to see if they're going to let me go to their demo account and go to, okay, they do. Perfect. So as I mentioned before, events are the things that are happening on your website. And let me go to Google. Yeah, I'll do it flooded. The things, the activities that are happening on your website. This is how Google now measures your website through these different events. Let me move some of this stuff out the way because I got all this stuff out the way that I can't even see my own screen right now. Okay, one second. Okay, and these events right here are just basically the activities happening on the website. Some of these events happen automatically through Google. And some events you have to custom put in there. And that's what huge part about the old version versus this new version is you had to do so much work to add what they're adding right here out the box where you get to see what's happening on your website out the box. So this is the most important thing right here is how Google captures, collects data. It collects it through events. Okay. So I just want you to understand that all this is an extreme amount that most of us will never have like of events this is not realistic i'll show you something that's a little bit more realistic so that way you can see something that's probably going to be more geared towards you so these are this is events from one of my one of my brands so as you can see we have things like somebody playing a video uh, adding to cart clicking on things forms filling out a form, submitting a form an internal click outbound link paid scroll pause like i said this is more typically what you're going to see in your Google Analytics account. So this, and this is good information because if you have this information, you're able to see what's actually happening on your website without having to set up a whole bunch of code from scratch. I'm going to help those of y'all avoid that in this session right here. So conversions are the most important events. 
And what I like about Google Analytics 4 is it allows you to just toggle on something to turn it into a conversion. Conversions is the equivalent to what used to be called goals and universal analytics. So for those of y'all who heard of the term goals in UA, that's what conversions is now. And conversions, as I mentioned, are the most important events, the most important activities happening on your website, something you deem either profitable or that's going to lead to an opportunity that if this happens, I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing well. We're good to go. These other things is cool, but if this thing happens, I know we're good to go. That's what a conversion is. And they made it so simple to just toggle on your, I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want to turn it back off and go through that, but you're able to just toggle on what is a conversion and what is not. Toggle on and off. They used to have, you used to have to do a whole bunch, I'm telling you, <laughs> when it come, came to UA, but they made it that simple here. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you don't understand anything about this whole property and how Google reads and captures and how you're able to see like what's most important in your website, events and conversions. What else did I want to go into? Just to go into something that's not going to get too deep into the weeds of things. Okay, so I'm going to show you a demonstration. I know, I just saw the chat real quick. But yeah, Abby, yeah, I know. They could have left goals being named goals. I'm going to share with you all. Okay, I'm going to share with you all some insight on... No, I'm going to share with you all that. Really. Okay, bam. Okay, so I'm going to show you what an event looks like when you dig a little deeper, you're probably wondering, what does he mean by that? Like, how deep does the rabbit hole really go, Alice? I'm about to take you to Wonderland. Okay. Let's, let's see. Okay, so I'm using a tool uh, to debug my website. It's called Google, is it called Google Tag Assistant? You can all get it for free. I would suggest you get it from your from Google extensions, Tag Assistant. And basically, it's able to read your Google tags, read to read your tags. And when you are able to read your tags, you're able to see the things that are happening on your website. Well, first of all, you can see what tags are on, associated with your website, right? So what other tools are connected to your website? But you're also able to, in a live way, see what's happening on your website and test things out. That's what this debugging feature is. I'll show you how you can turn that on using the plugin. But like I said, this part right here is easy peasy. It's free. I just go to my Google tag assistant extension. I click it. It asks me to put in domain. I put in the domain of my website. And now I am here. Um, I'm skipping this first one because GTM stands for Google tag manager. And I don't use Google tag manager anymore. I'm going to give you all an alternative of Google tag manager. This right here is my Google GA4 tag right here. And I'll show you how I connected it to the website. But this is my GA4 tag. This is UA right here, Universal Analytics. I don't care about that mo no more because they're getting rid of it. They're sunsetting it. So we're just looking at this one right here. This is right here, what you're able to do. So anything you do on your website, as long as you see this thing called Tag Assistant here, that means it's connected to your website. So for example, if I go to any page or anything like that, you're going to see, you're going to see more events pop up. So like I said, this is the best way to show you all how Google's reading your website in real time with events associated in GA4. Now, this is the best way I can show you. So you just saw that I clicked the page view. I clicked the link. I clicked two links, internal link. I just showed you in the events that it's capturing internal link right here. So I'm capturing this internal link. And that's the reason why you see this is an internal link. It's capturing this page view right here. So if I go back here, Page view, boom, page view. So you see, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, just put the chat. My show, this don't make no sense. If it does make some sense, show me some love and let me know if this is making a little bit of sense here. Another example would be, let's say I went to a video and I clicked on a video. So here's a video. If I clicked play, you're going to see, I just play the video. Player loaded. See how it's giving me all these different 75. So it's even giving me the time. Why is this important? If you can filter and look at data directly based on certain things, say 50%, you had a video and you knew this video was a big part of you selling a product or a service or a program or something, and only 25% of people watched, wouldn't you want to know that? What you want to know which video on which page people only got through 25% with so that you knew, okay, we got to do something about this video. Is it the video? Is it the page? What is it? Why are they only getting through 25%?
if they got through 100%, is people getting through 100% actually connecting with me, reaching another conversion, like making some amount of money, getting some type of leads, et cetera, et cetera, right? Blog views, if I get 100% of this, does this connect with that? That's how you have to think about your business and analytics, how the dots connect, right? And being able to filter down. Now, the cool part about this is when you click on one of these little card or buttons here, for example, it's going to show you information about the event. Now, see how we're getting deeper into the rabbit hole? We first had the event. Now we're seeing information about the event and what they call parameters. That's how Google is able to really create more nuances, a metadata of the event through these different parameters. So we're able to see the video's current time, the provider, the duration of the video, the URL, and the title. And this is where when you create your reports, you can filter for these specific things. Right here is looking at not just the event, oh, a video was played, but now I got more information on that video that was played or that event. This is what you're able to see. I'm just showing you this in real time using Tag Manager, but this is what you're able to see in Google Analytics. So I'm hoping that makes sense. Carolyn says, awesome. Great. I'm glad it is. I'm here for that. But this is just me showing you the back end of how Google is really able to look at your site, capture data from your site, and then you're able to really make better decisions from there. Now, when it comes to the data stream, you can click on it right here, and this gives you a whole bunch more information. So this is where you would use your ID. I don't think the demo site actually lets me get to the data stream or else I'll just be on the demo site, but it's going to not allow me to show you more stuff. So basically, this is what you're going to use. This is your ID right here that you use. This is the ID that you use when you connect it to certain apps and you connect it to your website or other things right here. This is the difference, the, the code. When we saw what is the difference between that and the old version of analytics. And this other part too called enhanced measurement. Like I said before, you'd have to do a whole bunch of coding to set up ways to capture data in the old version. This is doing it for you out the box. Scrolls, outbound clicks, site search, form interactions. I would suggest you keep this off and use, some, and use another way to do it video engagement, and then file downloads. For analytics nerds out there, for you people who want to be able to optimize your website, that's gold information because UA did not have that out the box. You have to set up Google Tag Manager or other tools in order to have Google capture that type of data. But custom definitions, this is something that's pretty cool when it comes to custom definitions that if you want to I'm surprised it's not showing it right now. I thought it would show it. But if you want to capture more data, more information, then do it here. Nope. Nope. Okay. Whatever. You would have to set parameters. And I wish I could show you my clients, but I can't because I want to evade the privacy. But you would see more, you would be able to see more information when you click on something like this. It's the same video, but now it knows I paused the video because it says pause right here, event name, pause. But you would be able to see, you would be able to create more parameters by putting in custom dimensions that Google doesn't have out the box. That's the best way I can say it. It doesn't have certain parameters out the box. You can put in more in order to get this information and you have it right there. And that's what this custom dimensions is underneath custom definition. And then when it comes to search console, I'll show you what that looks like here. So that is, let's go back to the, presentation. That is a Google Analytics 4 in a nutshell, as far as setting it up, as far as looking at the settings, and then I'll show you how you can set it up here in a second. But first I want to get to Google Search Console. Google Search Console is a tool, and I guess since I wrote the definition down, I might as well just use it. It's a tool that helps you understand how people find your website. It shows you what keywords people use to find your site, and if any issues might make it harder for people to find your site in search engines. So let's talk about Google Search Console versus Google Analytics, since this is something that often gets confused when people talk about analytics, because they're not the same thing. So the purpose of GA4 is to track user behavior on your website or app, where Google Search Console is to help you monitor and improve your website's performance and search results, specifically with Google Search, Google Analytics, it can capture data from all types of tools and channels. Google search is capturing data from the search engine of Google. GA4 tracks user behavior on your website using event-based data model, which I just showed you all those events, right? We just seen all those events. That's how Google Analytics 4 captures your data or does data collection. 
while Search Console provides data on how Google crawls and it indexes your website via the search engine. The user interface aspect of things. GA4 has a user interface optimized for analyzing user behavior, while Google Search Console has an interface for has an interface optimized for managing your website's presence again in the search results. So we're just being repetitive here, but we're just doubling down. It's all about the search results when it comes to Google Search. It's a tool for Google Search. Google Analytics is a tool for multitudes of channels when it comes to your marketing. The reports in GA4 provide a wide range of user behavior, including user demographics, acquisition channels, and page performance. I'll share, show you what that looks like real quick. And then Search Console reports, Search Console reports search performance, including search queries, pages, and backlinks. GA4 provides metrics such as page views, bounce rates, and time on site, while Search Console provides metrics such as click-through rate, impressions, and average position in the search results. So for example, Google Analytics is going to show you, and now I can go back to the demo account. Google Analytics is going to show you information like this. Users and new users, revenue, this stuff is new right here. This is getting Google expanding because this is for people who have e-commerce, buyer heartbeat. Now this is pretty, pretty interesting and nerdy, but let me go to, let's see, I don't want to go to real time. And they're measuring an app and the website. That's the reason why you're seeing this. So sessions right here, which remember, it used to do it by sessions, but now it just includes sessions and it does it by events. Lifetime value, you'll be able to see that of your customer through Google Analytics. That's not what Google Search Console shows you. It does not show you lifetime value. Engagement-wise, how long people have been on the site, they engage with the site. Like I said, how many events have happened? What are the pages that they're looking at on the website? This is what Google Analytics is showing you. So that's why I'm sharing with you, that is the difference. Google Search Console doesn't show you that kind of information. And I don't want to give into all my Google search, my clients, Google search stuff out here. So that's why I use the dummy account. So I wish I can show you more, but if there were clicks on this website, you would see how many clicks came from Google search, how many impressions. So how many impressions, how many times did the search query lead to somebody viewing possibly viewing the page as impression, then you have click-through rate, which is the ratio between how many people viewed the page versus clicked on the link to actually go to your website. Then you have your average position. So when it comes to your pages on your website, what is the average ranking position in Google that you're in? Are you in two or 30 or 50? That's what Google search console is going to show you here in this, inf with this information, which is way different than what Google analytics is showing you. But to create a Google search console, you could just Google search console. It'll sit, prompt you to log into your Google account, just like Google analytics. And then what it will do is it'll have you create a property. I would advise you to create a domain property unless you have a certain subdomain or certain reason why you need to create a URL prefix. The domain property is going to connect all of your properties, all your subdomains. So your blog dot xyz.com this is there services.xyz.com school academy if you put your main domain it's going to be connected to all of those they're all going to connect together and this is new for google search console for those of y'all who don't know this is new but you can do it the old school way and do the https or the http or the https www because those are all different things or the http www you can add that here and once you do, it's going to have you set up, connect your website with Google Search Console. The best way I can say is Google loves Google. So if you bought your domain from Google, it's going to be that like that. If you haven't bought your domain from Google, it's going to prompt you to log into your domain name service provider, and then you connect it that way. Or if you do it through the URL, it's going to have you add a code, like a script or something like that. But it's very easy. Once you do that, you're connected to Google Search Console. And then once you're connected to Google Search Console, you can either do it from Google Search Console or you can do it from here. It's gonna have me go to the admin where you're able to connect your Google Search Console link. You can link your properties, what they call it. So you can do it from there or you can do it from the settings and click associations and then click associate. So it's your choice. You can do it from Google Analytics or here. 
And once you actually do this, now here's the nugget that I just learned. And I had, I just set this up for a client and I was just like, wow, I didn't need to set my own properties. for it. It's all, it's new. This whole Google Analytics 4 thing is so new that only so many people are, uh, know about it. So I'm trying to learn from the best of the best, whether I'm taking courses or I'm watching videos because it's all new. But Search Console, oh, and they're not showing it here. Tis Google, so I got to show y'all on. I guess on my thing then, huh? Okay, all right. So once you're in here, why is it not showing it? There's a button that's supposed to say, okay, I got to go home. Maybe that was it. No, no. So there's a button that's supposed to say libraries right here. And it's not saying it for some reason. Let me see if I go to a different property. See, now it's showing up. That's interesting. If y'all see this migrating from Universal Analytics, this is what I was telling you right now. See how it's saying that it will stop processing data July 1st, 2023? Again, I would, it's up to you. If you just want to get it over with, go with it. If not, just say no. That's what they tell the kids, just say no. But library, once you connect your Google Search Console to your Google Analytics account, Go to this library. Again, this is something that I just learned less than a week ago. You got to go to this library and then you got to go to collection. And then once you go to collection, you will click this Google search console card right here. The reason why is because the way that Google has its reports, the way it does its reports now is it's in these different, the hierarchy of what they call collections. And in the collections, you have reports. So you have a collection here, see life cycle, life cycle, user, you see the pattern? This is what they call a collection. And then here are the reports. Like these are the reports that you would add in that collection. So if I edit this collection, I can actually edit, add more reports to this collection. If this changes, it changes. If I'm not saying this right, y'all, forgive me. Cause like I said, this is new. I just learned this myself, but I had no idea I can actually change things out and customize my use, my Google analytics user interface to my liking. You couldn't do it the same way with the old version. So that's why I was like, okay, this is cool. Even if this is something new for me, the reason I'm sharing with you, because I kept wondering and I didn't know for a while, like why I or anybody else that I was set up, like why they weren't getting their search console data. I was like, oh, you got to create a collect. It doesn't come off. You have to actually go here and click publish. It's here, but you have to publish it. Then once you publish it, see how it's not there right now? Boom. Once you publish it, it shows up. See, now you can see your search console data in Google Analytics and look at your queries, look at how people are searching for you in Google search and see those kind of keywords from there. So that's something that is super new for me. Hopefully y'all got that, understand that, and can rock with that and start teaching people like y'all the guru. I just learned that. But that's something that I feel like is highly needed to be understood. Because once you set this up, your Google search console, most people aren't going to be in here. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, your analytics expert person, consultant, they should be using this. But you as the business owner, you're not going to be in here for the most part. So you just want to have make sure it's set up right, it's connected right. And then once you get in here... You're able to add your sitemap right here, what SEO tool you use, add your sitemap here. So that way you're getting indexed. You hit submit. Okay, boom, your sitemap's in there. It's going to start reading your pages. You pretty much are good to go. You have any issues or experience, anything that needs to be dealt with, you can go to the manual action security. It'll let you know this are the issues happening with your website. You can also look at your core web vitals to see what your website looks like speed wise to Google in here as well. Just keep in mind, this tool is for Google. It ain't for nothing else. If you don't learn nothing else between the difference of GA4, this is for Google. GA4 is for multitude of channels. But Google Search Console is a tool for Google on how you're being seen in search, how your website is affecting the search experience. And let's move on to the last one. And then I'll answer some questions and I'll get y'all out of here. Are y'all awake out there? <laughs> I know some people had to go. We had some drop-offs and stuff. I just want to make sure everybody's still good. And if you're still good, give me a thumbs up or, or hands up in the chat, please. Give me an emoji. Show me some emoji love. Man, everybody's asleep, huh? I ain't got no emoji love. 
Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. I'm more than I'm grateful for that. Co. Richard gonna give me the LOL. You had enough time to type in the law, but not put an emoji, huh? See how they do you. Volunteer time. This is what you get. All right. Let's get into Microsoft Clarity. If you have any questions on Google Search Console, again, feel free to ask me and I'll do my best to answer. Last but not least is Microsoft Clarity. And so Microsoft Clarity is like a movie camera that records what people do on your website. It helps you see things like where people click and how they use the site in a visual, keyword is a visual way. That's Microsoft Clarity. Thank you, Caroline and Audrey as well, too. They're very grateful for that. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between Microsoft Clarity and Google Analytics. And if you have if you use Clarity, if you've heard of Clarity, let me know in the chat if you've heard of Clarity or you use Clarity, because this is the one that I think most people have no clue what it does, what it's for. I think this is probably one of the biggest golden nuggets of this whole topic as far as giving you a tool that you didn't even know either existed or is easy. Okay, okay. And thank you too, Abby, I appreciate you. I definitely will be having a, re a recording of this and I'll throw it on wordpress.tv. I'm one behind, I still gotta add another video on there, but I'm gonna make sure I just throw these pretty much on together back to back. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly go through the differences, but if you do wanna read verbatim, the definition, that's okay. I just want to give you all the summary of it. Basically, <clears throat> for the data collection, it uses a script, basically the old way that Google Analytics used to use, which was the UA. And GA4 uses, I showed you that tracking tag. It says G dash, and then it has those numbers. That's one way, how they collect data. The, unit, the user interface for Microsoft Clarity, I would say is a little bit more user-friendly. Then Google Analytics 4, even though Google Analytics 4 is a lot more friendly than UA. And then Microsoft Clarity also shows you in a very visual way. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. From a data standpoint, Microsoft Clarity provides data on user behavior, which is heat maps, session recordings, and click maps. Where GA4, Google provides data on demographics. It's still user behavior, but it's based on demographics, acquisition channels, and advanced features, such as predictive analytics. Google Analytics 4 has machine learning, while Microsoft Clarity does not have this feature. Not yet, anyway. Google Analytics can be integrated with a lot of tools and big tools, such as Google Ads and BigQuery, where Microsoft Clarity is integrated with tools such as Power BI and Azure, which are Microsoft. And cost-wise, both tools are free, but Microsoft Clarity has no limit to the amount of data you can collect, where GA4 has a limit of 10 million events per month for free accounts. And that's more than enough, right? So they're both free technically. So let's get into Microsoft Clarity real quick. This is what Microsoft Clarity looks like. And this is this has become one of my favorite analytics tool. Like I, I had no idea how much, because I used to use a tool called Hotjar. If anybody's heard of Hotjar, let me know. But I used to use a tool called Hotjar and then Clarity came out and they were like, okay, we can't compete with Google. So we're gonna do something that works with Google. And they made a great decision. They made a really fabulous decision. So what they basically did was say, hey, we're going to create a tool that does recordings and heat maps. And right now, Google doesn't do recordings and heat maps. They have a dashboard that's similar to Google like in the ways where it has these cards and these sections. And if I go back to Google real quick and I go to real time as an example, you'll see this is the new popular way of showing data. It makes things a lot easier. Let me go to the demo account here. Flood it. So you have these cards here that's looking at everything in real time. And it just gives you the cat, these, these different dimensions and metrics. If I go to app developer here, it's going to do the same thing. That's how they are showing you data. So just kind of get used to that. When you go from tool to tool that you're going to see information like this for the most part. And when you click on it, it goes to that section. So they give you a little snapshot of the top of it. And then once you click on it, okay, bam, we'll go deeper and we'll go to that section for you. See how it just pop to the section, Microsoft Clarity is similar. Because if you click on this recordings button, it's going to pop you over here to the recording section. 
So I just wanted to share with you all, that's something you'll see across the board between these two tools. And as I mentioned, they both capture user behavior, except Microsoft Clarity focuses on more of the visual aspects of things. So a couple of my favorite a couple of my favorite metrics to look at or numbers to look at are dead clicks. Basically, dead clicks are when a user has clicked or tapped on a page with no effect, like at all. Uh, this can indicate that maybe you need to move something or maybe you need to, let me hover back over so you can see, maybe you need to turn that section into a linkable section, right? Or maybe you need to make it very clear that section ain't a linkable section. You need to change your design up. Google Analytics doesn't show you that. So this is when it comes to helping user experience, improve the user experience. Again, Google Analytics and Google Search Console does not show you dead clicks. I'm clicking on this thing. I'm thinking, okay, I'm clicking this thing and it's nothing happens. This is the percentage of people clicking on something and nothing happened on your website. Rage clicks is when somebody's clicking on something multiple times and nothing's happening. So what is the difference between dead clicks and rage clicks and how can that help you improve your website? Again, dead clicks can be an indication. I'm not saying this is exactly what it is, but an indication of maybe you should make this section or this thing clickable, or you should make it clear this is not supposed to be a clickable scenario. Maybe you got too much shadow. You're making it pop out too much. Person thinks that it's clickable, right? Uh-uh. Rage click is a is when you see people clicking it multiple times and it's letting you know as the business owner, maybe I need to make this clickable. Like the, it could be a broken link. Maybe it's supposed to be, it is a link, but the link is broken. So they're clicking on a person. I know this is supposed to be clickable. I, this is a button. Why this button ain't going nowhere? They can click it and click it and this button ain't going nowhere. Oh, you as the business owner, oh, oh I forgot to change the link out. I forgot to add the thing. I can see that now with Microsoft Clarity. I wouldn't be able to see that with Google Analytics. Y'all get what I'm saying right now? So that is something that creates a big distinction between the two tools is that it's giving you more aspects of what a user is doing for this right here in terms of clicks. Then we have metrics like quickbacks. So this is when a user has navigated to a page and then they quickly return to the previous one. Right. So if they went somewhere, they went to the next page and then they came back. Why did they do that? That's a good question. Maybe the page wasn't relevant. Maybe it was confusing. Maybe this wasn't a good page to be sent into the next page. You now see that with quickbacks. You don't see that in Google Analytics. I'm just looking at the, the things that are shown here in Google Analytics. Excessive scrolling. A person is scrolling too much on the page. Right, they can't find what they're looking for. Again, Google Analytics doesn't show you that. Microsoft Clarity shows you that right here in this nice dashboard section. So if I go to recordings, and this is nice too, being able to see scroll depth, how far a person scrolls. Well, my favorite parts about Microsoft Clarity is that you can literally click on one of these cards, and these are recordings, and you can see what a person's doing. So you can see the users of what they're doing on your website. You can see the time, how many times they made, made a click. So these clicks are going to that dashboard where it's showing you the information, but it's showing you individual user sessions. And then you can also filter and say, hey, I only want to see certain information. I want to see the last 30 days. I want to see only rage clicks, sessions with rage clicks. I want to see certain pages. You can get pretty deep with this. So I ain't going to go too deep, but you can get pretty deep with this. But this is why I say is it's something that's invaluable because Google Analytics doesn't show you exactly what a person is doing on your website. You're visually seeing their experience. This is how you improve user experience. You can hear the clicks. I don't know if y'all can hear the clicks, but I can hear the clicks. So that's one thing that, I, again, recordings, nice. Heat maps, you can see heat maps of your pages. So these are the different pages on Microsoft Clarity website. And you click on this page, you're able to see a heat map. You're able to see literally where a person is clicking and how far they scrolled. Red hot means better. Blue means lesser. It's colder. And you can see where people are clicking at. You can imagine that these clicks, these spots you see, these will be considered. Anybody know what these would be considered? These spots right here. Most likely. I just showed you what they are in the dashboard. What would they be called? What type of click? 
You put it in the chat, I'll give you an air horn. Everybody don't speak at once. Okay. So nobody can guess? It will be considered a dead click. Most likely. Most likely this spot is one click. If it were a bigger spot, probably darker, I would consider it, it could be a rage click if it's not going anywhere. But these are the dead clicks right here. Why are people clicking on these different spots? Now, sometimes you're just going to get it. It's just going to happen. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. But this is how you look at the information on your website and see how you can make changes to change up your layout, the design. Maybe you should change the color. Maybe you should change the section order. You wouldn't know this information from Google Analytics. You get this information from Microsoft Clarity. You get to see how far you get to see how far a person actually scrolls down. Again, this is very important because if you have important information at the bottom of the page, maybe you need to move that information at the top. Maybe you need to make the page shorter. You won't know how to answer these questions if you don't even know what questions to ask. You don't even know what information to look at. This is why Microsoft Clarity is very important. And then you can also, in order to set it up, you can add a tracking code. This is like the tracking code JavaScript right there that they give you. And then you can connect it to Google Analytics as well too. Microsoft Clarity to Google Analytics. And then connecting Google Analytics to your website is so simple. This is going to be a golden nugget right here for those of you all who are here um, who don't know about this. I don't use Google Tag Manager anymore. I used to use Google Tag Manager. Basically, it was a tool that people use, webmasters and analytics experts use to connect different tags and scripts to your website from marketing platforms, right? Such as Google. Since I use WordPress, I don't have to use Google Tag Manager. I prefer to use a plugin to connect my Google property and other proper other, yeah, properties and tags to my website. My favorite one is called Pixel Your Site. Right here. This is my favorite one right here. You see it has four and a half stars, so you know it's gotta be at least decent. I was going to say good, but then some people might say, and it still may not be good. Well, we know it's at least a little decent, okay? Pixel your site is what you want to add. It's a plugin. It's free. But the things I advise you, I pay for the professional. Um, that's just my opinion. The professional is going to give you more capabilities. You don't got to go through the bundle, at least the professional. But this is what Pixel your site does. It allows you to connect your Google Analytics property to your website. You would copy that tracking ID that I showed you in the data stream, that G dash, blah, 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 blah. It's not going to be that long. Add that here and then check this debug mode because that's how you're going to be able to get this debug aspect that I just showed you right there, right? Okay. Do that. Go down here and save. That's the first thing. After you save, go back and then click on this toggle called track key actions with automatic events toggle that on once you toggle that on you'll see all the free automatic events it's going to be help tracking for you without you having to add google tag manager and add all those individual just basically setups do all that individually instead of individually the free feature does not give you these right here but the free version gives you this right here and so one thing i want you to notice is when you are looking at these, it says, hey, we will do this for Facebook and for Google Analytics. And then here are the parameters that we're collecting. Remember I showed you the parameters and right here. So each event has certain type of parameters. This tool is saying we'll automatically collect these parameters on, on your, we've already set it up. We've already done the setup, the code, and you ain't gotta do none of that. We gonna do it for you. You just put the plugin, hook it up, add your thing, and you good to go. It's only because of this plugin that I'm getting so much information in my events without having to have set up everything from scratch or custom. So I, this is what I do. I turn this on and then I decide whether or not I want Google. The cool thing about this plugin is they tell you, hey, Google also collects this. Let me show you real quick. It will say Google Analytics 4 automatically tracks this. So if you want to turn this off for Google Analytics, you can. Okay, bam, turn it off. So that way you don't have two different types of download events in your data because it's saying Google Analytics already does this, but we'll do it for Facebook for you. So you only got to turn off Facebook, but you might want to turn off Google Analytics. Okay. This right here is a golden gem. I'm trying to tell you, I've been saving people's lives. Like I've helped people spend more time with their kids. I've helped people take that vacation. 
I've helped people get off of aspirin and Advil, all type of, I mean, when I say people that are, yeah, that are tired of dealing with Google Tag Manager and all that, but they got to read them analytics. They got to know the analytics. They got to have everything set up because that's what the money is about, right? But they're like, I can get rid of Google Tag Manager. I didn't know this thing existed. Specifically, people with WordPress. And it just blows their mind. Like, it's especially older folks, you know what I'm saying? They don't know. I didn't know. But I'm just letting y'all know this is a gem. So again, go on here, toggle that on, and decide whether or not you want Google to collect the data or you want this tool to collect the data. I'm going to close this out right here. Make sure you also toggle on this debug mode right here. This is, how, again, how I'm able to see information. So toggle that on and save it. You don't got to touch nothing else for right now. Just all this other stuff is getting more advanced, but just toggle that on. As far as Microsoft Clarity is concerned, see this header and footer link, you would click this and then you would go to Microsoft Clarity. You would grab that tracking code and you would plop that bad boy right there and save. Now you have Google Analytics 4 and Microsoft Clarity connected together and connected using the same tool. That just saves you a plugin or two, right? You can always put this tracking code in your theme. You can put it in the code plugin, code snippet plugin. I advise those two for other things because those usually have templates. But hey, if you just want to consolidate, I would advise you to just put that bad boy right here. Now you got Microsoft Clarity collecting data and you got Google Analytics collecting data right here. You put your tracking code right here. If you're feeling froggy, put your Facebook in here, put that joint in here, collect some data, and you're good. Okay? So that's why I wanted to share that with you. That right there, I'm telling you, it's going to save you so much time than doing Google Tag Manager because we all here use WordPress. You didn't use WordPress, I, I, you might have to do something different. But look, we can all use a plugin if we want to. Now, when it comes to looking at your analytics from the back end here, if I were you, I would just use SiteKit by Google. Install this. And there's two things that I want you to know about this a plugin when it comes to what it can do. First of all, it can connect your website to Google Analytics. That's one thing. Second of all, it can show your Google Analytics data directly here in WordPress. Those are two different things. I just want you to know that. Don't get confused. They're two different things because... You don't want to connect your site to Google Analytics twice. Don't want to do it twice. You don't want to do it to pixel your site and do it the Google Site Kit. If you do it just the Google Site Kit and you pixel your site, you're going to have some issues because you're collecting twice the data. If you only do it through Google Site Kit, you don't do it through Google your site, which you can do that now. But if you do it that way, you won't have all those special tracking features that Pixel Your Site gives you that. I just showed you the automatically tracks. You don't have those special joints at all. That's why I advise you to connect it through Pixel Your Site, but review your data through Google Site Kit. And it basically is just going to show you a summary of what this shows you in a very short way. You could also connect Google Search Console that way too as well. And those are, And that's pretty much it as far as what you want to look at, what insights you want to look at, how you connect your properties. And then that way you have a 360 view of your whole analytics. City walls.